Hello, welcome to Apex Math. Today we are going to look at finding GCF, greatest common factor, and LCM, least common multiple, which is often used for adding fractions, finding least common denominators, and we're going to do it the easy way. There's lots of different ways to do it, but I found uh, one way that I think is the easiest way possible. So we're going to do it that way. All right, so we're going to start off by clearing our screen. And we're going to take a look at two numbers, 6 and 8. And we're going to find both the GCF and the LCM. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to think of any number that you can think of that goes divides into both of these numbers, other than 1 and the number itself. So any factor that is a factor of both of these numbers. Um, if you need help, you can write numbers over to the side here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. And ask yourself, does 2 go into both of them? Does 3 go into both? Does 4, etc. They're both even, so the obvious one that goes into both of them is 2. So I'm going to divide both numbers by 2. And get the answer. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, and 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. And then I'm going to ask myself that same question. Are there any other numbers that divide into both 3 and 4? And I want to find the point at which there are no other numbers besides 1 that goes into the remaining numbers. And 3 and 4, there are no common factors for these two numbers except 1. You can kind of thinking, think of it as reducing a fraction to lowest terms. So if you previously had taken 6 eighths and you had to reduce it to lowest form, that would be 3 fourths. And so we know there are no numbers that go into both 3 and 4 uh, besides 1. So we would know that we would stop there. So this is where we stop in this process as well. And once we've done that, now it's very easy to find the LCM and the GCF. The GCF is just going to be the product of any numbers that you have divided out. In this case, we've only divided out one number. So it's going to be 2. So the greatest common factor is 2. If we had divided out more than one number, we would multiply those. And we'll do an example where that happens um, a little bit later on. So that would be our greatest common factor. Now we're going to find our least common multiple. To find the least common multiple, we take the number that we start with, and we multiply it diagonally times the number that we end with. So we multiply 6 times 4, and we get 24. Now, it doesn't matter which one you pick. If you had chosen 8 and multiplied it diagonally times the 3, you're going to get the same answer. So whichever multiplication fact you find easier to do is the one that you should choose. So our LCM, or our least common multiple, is 24. And that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and do another one. This time, I am going to take the numbers 12 and 15. And again, I'm going to think, what numbers can I think of that divide into both 12 and 15? Now, this time, they're not both even, so 2 would not be a possibility. So I might think to the next number, does 3 go into both of them? And it does. So I'm going to divide them both by 3. And 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. And 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. 
Now again, I'm going to ask myself, is there any number other than 1 that I can divide into both 4 and 5? And the answer is no. 4 fifths would be a fraction in lowest terms, so I know that I am done. So now I can find my GCF and my LCM. My GCF is the product of any numbers that I have divided out. And in this case, again, I've only divided out one number, so my GCF is 3. And my LCM is going to be, I can choose either 15 times 4, which I might not know in my head, but I do know 12 my 12 facts are better than my 15 facts. So 12 times 5, 12 times 5 is equal to 60. So that is my LCM. And if you have multiplied 15 times 4, you do get 60. So again, either way, you get the same answer. You take your first number, and you multiply it times the very last number diagonally. Now let's do one where we're going to have to divide out more than one number. So let's take 30 and 75. 30 and 75. And let's think, what's the first number that comes to mind that goes in evenly into both of these two numbers? Well, I think of 3, because I think of 75 cents, and there's three 25 cents in a 75 cents. So I know 3 goes into that. 3 obviously goes into 30. So I'm going to divide out 3. 30 divided by 3 gives me 10. And 75 divided by 3 gives me 25. Now, I'm going to look at the remaining numbers. 10 and 25. Are those down in simplest form? Is there anything else that goes into both those numbers? In this case, there is still an additional number that goes into both of those. That ends in a 0 and a 5, so that means 5 goes into both of those numbers. So I'm going to divide again. I'm going to divide out 5. And I keep dividing out numbers until I end up with that simplest form in the end. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now I have a 2 and a 5. And there are no numbers that go into both 2 and 5. They're prime. So I know that I can stop. So now I need to find my GCF. So what numbers did I divide out? I divided out a 3. And I divided out a 5. So my GCF is the product, which means multiplication, of all the numbers that I divided out. So 3 times 5 is 15. So my GCF is 15. Now I'm going to find my LCM. So for my LCM, I'm going to take my first number, and I'm diagonally going to multiply it times the very last number that I found. So I have 30 times 5 as my LCM. And if I do 3 times 5, I get 15, and then I stick a 0 on the end. So I get 150. And again, notice that is the same number I get if you did 75 divided by 2. Always remembering you must go diagonally to first number to the last number. So 75 times 2 is the other choice you had, also giving you 150. So that is your LCM. This is by far the easiest way of finding your greatest common factor and your least common multiple. Now, what happens if you have three numbers? Sometimes teachers like to give three numbers as an example. Um, so let's see. Let's say we have 8 
and 12 and uh, 20. What would I do in this case? Well, it's a couple extra steps, but what I would do is I would break it up into finding the LCM of these two numbers first. So let's go ahead and say what goes into both 8 and 12. Well, 8 and 12, I can, the biggest number I think of is 4. I could have done 2, um, and then I would have had to have divided out twice. But 4 comes to mind, so I'm going to do that. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. And that's as far as I get. So now I'm going to take and ask myself, is there anything that goes into the 2 and the 3? And that is in simplest form. So I am finished, and I am going to do, I uh, like multiplying by 2, so I'm going to choose to multiply these two. So my GCF is what I have divided out, which is 4, and my LCM is 24. So now if I want to go ahead and find, add 20 to the mix, well, to find the GCF, we can actually just continue um, with the process here and say, well, does what goes into all three of these numbers? So in that case, notice that 4 goes into this as well, and I get 5. So since 4 went into all of those numbers, then my GCF would remain 4 for all three of these numbers. I'm more interested in working on the LCM in the case of three numbers here. And so what we have to do in the case of the LCM is we have to take the LCM that we found here by doing it with two numbers and then add that LCM to the number that we have here. So now we're going to find the LCM of 20 and 24. So I'm going to erase this um, since we're not working on the GCF right now. Even though actually that still would apply because they both are divisible by 4. So I'm going to ask myself what goes into both 20 and 24? Well, I can go ahead and divide them both by 4. Now if I think about it, I could have left that. So if I divide them both by 4, I get 5 and 6. And 5 and 6 can no longer be reduced down. So now I'm going to take and do my cross multiplication. And I'm going to do, I think it's easier to multiply 20 times 6. So my LCM is going to be 20 times 6. I do 2 times 6 is 12 and add a 0. So my LCM is, of all three numbers, is 120. The GCF I still found out that you just use the regular approach and divide it out and say what number goes into all of these and find the product of the numbers. So really the GCF process doesn't change. But the LCM process does need to change. You take the LCM of your first two numbers, add that LCM, and find your third number with the LCM and find the LCM of those two numbers. So this is number one this is number 2, and this is number 3, and this is the LCM of 1 and 2. So just to 
Repeat one more time for the LCM step. I found the LCM of 1 and 2, and then I found the LCM of number 3 with that LCM of 1 and 2 as my fourth number. And that gave me the LCM of all three numbers. So this end here is a little bit more advanced of how you can do it when you have three numbers. Um, but uh, you got to see how easy the process is, especially if you only have two numbers, which is the more common situation, because again, we use this when we're adding fractions, etc. So thank you very much for visiting Apex Math. If you found our LCM GCF method helpful, please do us a favor and like our video. And go ahead and leave us comments on uh, future videos that you would like to see. Comments on any future videos.